Let's have a chat about nitrogen and sulfur. Specifically, how the two interact. Nitrogen and sulfur are utilized together in the plant to build proteins and DNA. If you have excessive amounts of one, you'll likely have a deficiency of the other. Different crops prefer different ratios of nitrogen to sulfur. Canola, for instance, takes up four and a half units of nitrogen for every unit of sulfur. Grass hay and corn is around eight units of nitrogen per unit of sulfur, and potatoes and cereals take up about 11 units of nitrogen per unit of sulfur. When we apply nitrogen and sulfur in a dry blend, it's usually a mix of urea and ammonium sulfate. So, while we can dial in our ratios, there are some problems that arise with this. First, we have to understand the properties of urea and ammonium sulfate. If we look at their bulk densities, we can see that urea weighs about 48 pounds per cubic foot, while ammonium sulfate weighs around 57 pounds per cubic foot. We also need to look at the hardness of the granules. Urea crushes at between 1.5 and 3.5 kilograms per granule, while ammonium sulfate crushes between 1.5 and 2.5 and kilograms per granule. These are both very soft materials, meaning that it doesn't take much force to, for them to turn into dust. These differences in density and low crush strength work against us in a blend. As the fertilizer is augered, bounced in a truck, and applied to the field, a lot of segregation can occur similar to what happens in a grade school science experiment when you have sand and rocks and shake them up in a vessel. The larger granules float to the top and leave the dustier, smaller pieces on the bottom. The issues compound during application with the spinner spreader. As the fan strikes the granules, the softer and less dense granules break up. Physics tells us that an object of lower mass accelerates less than an object of higher mass. So, for us, this means that the fertilizer that has been reduced to dust will fly a shorter distance than the fertilizer that is still in a large prill. And, due to their bulk densities, urea will generally fly shorter distance than the heavier ammonium sulfate. If you've ever seen striping in a field after an application of fertilizer, this is usually what causes it that difference of flight path of the urea and the ammonium sulfate. To address this issue, Yara created a product called Yara Vera Amidas. Amidas is a homogeneous blend of urea and ammonium sulfate. Every prill has the same ratio of 40 units of nitrogen and five and a half units of sulfur. This is roughly a 7.3 to one ratio of nitrogen to sulfur. Yara Vera Amidas has a bulk density similar to urea. It has a crush strength of 5.5 to 6.5 kilograms per granule though, much higher than urea or ammonium sulfate. It's also very uniform in size and is coated with a compound that drastically reduces dust. As we see here, even though it's a hard granule and has a coating, it still dissolves just as rapidly, if not faster, in soil than urea. Yaravera Amidas ensures a uniform application of both nitrogen and sulfur in the field, eliminating the segregation, the crushing, and the dust issues. We see Yaravera Amidas as a great fit in broadcast applications on crops such as wheat, corn, timothy, and grass hay. Follow the guidance of your crop consultant for application rates and correct timings. Make sure to ask your supplier about Yaravera Amidas or find more information online at yara.us.